Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Amazon Fire TV Stick Ethernet adapter. So if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to this in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. Also put a link to the Fire TV Stick I'm using, and I'll put a link to my Amazon Fire TV playlist where you can find my other videos on this device. And this is the third gen model from 2020, and it has the TV controls on it. And I really like this Fire TV Stick. So I'm going to go over what this does, this Ethernet adapter, and then why you may or may not want one of these. And I did say may not, because this isn't for everyone. So here it is here, we have a little peel off thing. I don't feel like this needed a peel off thing, but maybe it makes people feel better if they get to peel something off. And it left a little residue there. Also came with a little manual talks about how to use it. So this is a pass-through device. I'm guessing this uses USB on the go. You could potentially stick this into a cell phone and hook ethernet up to your cell phone. I haven't tried it, but I wouldn't be surprised if that would work. If it fries your phone, don't blame me. So this is 100 megabit ethernet. So I have some ethernet here, I'll plug into it. And the reason you may not want one of these is that the Fire TV Stick supports higher speeds on Wi-Fi. So depending on your Wi-Fi setup, the Wi-Fi may be faster, but it's not that simple. If you look at Netflix's guidelines for bandwidth online, they recommend five megabits per second for an HD video stream, and their highest offering, which is the Ultra HD, I think it's 4K, kind of whatever, it's a 25 megabits per second, and this is only a, an HD Fire TV stick. But even if it was the 4K version, this can support four times the bandwidth of a Netflix Ultra HD or whatever they call it stream. And I'm guessing Prime and others that have 4K streams have similar requirements. They're not likely to hit anywhere near 100 megabits when you stream those. So the reason I like to use an Ethernet adapter on a device like this is that there are so many Wi-Fi enabled devices around. We have laptops, phones, tablets, uh, smart devices, TVs, you name it. So anytime that I can plug something into the network, I'm taking that device off of the Wi-Fi and freeing up that Wi-Fi bandwidth for other devices. So I have one Fire TV stick that I use, and I actually have another one on order. It should be here in a couple days. And the one that goes in our bedroom will be on Wi-Fi because I don't have Ethernet there. But the one we're going to put in the living room, I have Ethernet there. I have Ethernet hooked up to a hub behind the TV, and I have it hooked into the TV, the PlayStation, the Wii. All that's hooked on Ethernet. So I can plug this into Ethernet too and free up that bandwidth for other devices. So I'm going to run some speed tests on here with the Wi-Fi and then we'll hook in the Ethernet adapter. We'll run a speed test there. So we'll switch over to the Fire TV stick. Right now I have it connected up to my 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Just went to sleep or something. <laughs> Good timing. So I'll go to these three dots here. And I'm going to go to the internet app. It's the Silk browser. And I've installed this open speed test. So this is running on another device in my house that's hooked up to my ethernet network. So this isn't a speed test like speedtest.net where it's checking the internet bandwidth. My internet at my house is only 40 megabits per second. So I wouldn't be able to test the full speed of these devices. This is hooked on my network attached storage, which has gigabit ethernet. So I'll put a link below to a playlist where I have directions on how to install open speed tests on a number of devices. You can install it on a Mac or a PC that's wired into your network. So you would install it on that device and then you can go to a web browser browser on your Fire TV stick, your phone, your tablet, whatever, and you can test your LAN speed, similar to how you test your internet speed with something like speedtest.net. So I'll scroll down here. Oh, I ran a test before. I need to actually refresh this. So to restart the test, I'll hit refresh. It'll reload this page. I'll scroll down, and this is on my 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Start the test. Okay. And here we started out under 100 megabit, and now we just popped just over 100 megabit. So we're getting about 104, 105 megabits per second download speed. And then for upload, we got about 80. It's kind of doing the same thing. It's hovering around 80. It did pop above 100 there for a second. It looks like it's mostly staying around 80 there. So that's with the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So now I'm going to go in my settings, I'll switch this to my five gigahertz Wi-Fi and we'll test it there, okay? So when I switch the network and I open Silk back up, it automatically refreshed the page so I don't have to do it manually. Okay, so on my five gigahertz test, we're getting a little bit faster speed here, although it kind of jumped back down. So it's at about 134. Now with a higher end computer, this will run gigabit ethernet on this Wi-Fi network, or almost near it. Okay, and then our upload, we're getting like 260. So quite a bit faster on the upload there. So as you can see here, we're way over 100 megabit 
per second on the upload and quite a bit over on the download. And to install this device, I actually have to unplug it. So I will be doing that. I'll unplug the power. I'll plug the micro USB from the ethernet adapter into the Fire TV stick. Of course, it's micro USB, so you have to have it the correct orientation. I'll plug the power into the ethernet adapter, like so, and now it will boot up. Now I don't see any light on here telling me that Ethernet is active. Oh, there's another little peel off thing here. Wow, made my day. So yeah, there's no indication that this works, but I could look at the other end where this Ethernet's connected into the switch and see that it lit up. So I'm going to go over to my gear here now. I'll go down to network. Okay, and under network it says wired connection. So we can hit the play pause button to see our network status. Let's try that. It says connected to ethernet, connected to the internet. Okay, that looks good. I'll go in and run my speed test. So I'm very happy that this actually keeps my URL in here. To access the speed test, you type in the IP address, then colon 3000 up here at the top, and I'm glad I don't have to type it in each time. Now you can hook a Bluetooth keyboard up to these, and I have a video on my playlist about doing that. So I'll go down here to run the test. And here we're getting about 80 megabits per second, 90. Now for upload, we're getting around 100. So when you see that spike above 100, and this is a 100 megabit adapter, it's probably something in the algorithm of the speed test that is making that happen. I don't think the ethernet adapter is going faster than 100 megabit per second. So there we go, we got 95 megabits per second download and 97 megabits per second upload. And I forgot to mention earlier, this is compatible with the second gen Fire TV stick and up. And you could read the product description to see exactly what it's compatible with. So should you buy this? So if you are using this in an area that doesn't have ethernet and your Wi-Fi is working well, I would just keep your Wi-Fi. If you're putting this in an area that has ethernet available and your Wi-Fi is working well, and that's my situation, then you can go either way. If you want to free up some of your Wi-Fi bandwidth, then maybe you put the ethernet adapter in. If you want to go with the ain't broke, don't fix it mentality, then I would just leave it be. Now, if it's on Wi-Fi and not working well, and you don't have ethernet nearby, it may be worth it to get this adapter and run an ethernet cable to your TV. It may also be worth it to get a upgraded Wi-Fi system. But if you live in a place like an apartment complex where there's a lot of Wi-Fi stuff going on, it may make sense to just get the ethernet adapter and then you don't have to worry about Wi-Fi cutting out on this thing. So that's the Amazon Fire TV ethernet adapter. Hopefully I answered some questions people might have about if they should get one of these or not. But if you do have any more specific questions, please drop those in the comments. I can hopefully help you answer those. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.